It's the Assumption of Blessed Virgin Mary. Uh, just as I mentioned yesterday, announcements there will be no Mass tomorrow on Tuesday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Mass will be at, at 7.30 a.m. Today's feast day, Feast of the Assumption, actually has a, a Mass, uh, a new, new Mass composed. Pope Pius XII composed a Mass, a uh, new, new Mass proper's new office for the day in honor of the declaration of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary as being a dogma of the faith. What that means is that the church didn't just come up with some new thought that, well, Our Lady is assumed into heaven body and, assumed into heaven body and soul, but the church always held that. From the time, virtually from the time of the apostles, uh, any reference, we, it's always referenced that she was assumed into heaven, Our Lady is assumed into heaven body and soul. So it was always believed that the Mass that was always offered, when starts, the Mass starts out in your Missal, it would be Gaudi Amos. That was the, the Mass that was used, I will say, for centuries. However, in the making the declaration of the Assumption as a dogma of the faith, uh, Pope Pius XII had this new Mass. It starts out, Sinu Manum, a great sign appeared in the heavens. The epistle pointed for today's Mass is taken from the, from the book of Judith, chapter 13, verses 22 through 25. Chapter 15, verse 10. The Lord hath blessed thee by his power, because by thee he hath brought our enemies to naught. Blessed art thou, O daughter, by the Lord the Most High God, above all women upon the earth. Blessed be the Lord who made heaven and earth, who hath directed thee in the cutting off the head of the prince of our enemies, because he hath so magnified thy name this day, that thy praise shall not depart out of the mouth of men, who shall be mindful of the power of the Lord forever. For thou hast not spared thy life by the reason of the distress and tribulation of thy people, but hast prevented our ruin in the presence of our God. Thou art the glory of Jerusalem, thou art the glory, joy of Israel, thou art the honor of our people. The Gospel appointed for today's Mass, taking the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter, 41, chapter 1, verses 41 through 50. At that time, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost, and she cried out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed art thou that hast believed, because those things shall be accomplished that were spoken to thee by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in, my God, in God my Savior, because he hath re regarded the humility of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth shall all generations shall call me blessed, because he that is mighty hath done great things to me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is from generation unto generations to them that fear him. Thus far are the words of today's Holy Gospel. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. She cried with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. One should probably, we should probably go, I should probably go back in time to give sort of a chronological order of what took place when, that we have today. We celebrate the Assumption. It all started, if we want to go back to the very beginning, God from all eternity knew that he's going to, at the Blessed Virgin Mary, was going to become uh, the mother of God. It's believed that God revealed it to the angels after their creation. And remember, in, in heaven, in eternity, with God, with the angels, there is no time as we know it. Time, the closest one can understand the time, let's say, of heaven and of hell, I've mentioned this before, is if we can understand how time passes in heaven, more than likely it would be something like if we are enthused, taken up, enthralled with some, some thing, be it visiting somebody, uh, engaging some hobby, whatever it might be, and we look at the clock and hours went by and it felt like minutes, like it just started and all of a sudden hours later has gone by. And of course the hell is quite the opposite. We've all been in a circumstance where it seems like time just drags, it just goes on forever. And we look at the clock and look at the clock, we're visiting somebody, we're doing something, it just drags on forever. Just, we let the clock, just minutes go by, and literally uh, we have to sit there for hours and hours, it seems like days. That's more than likely what hell feels like. But in heaven, God revealed to the angels, and time being what it is, we have no concept of when he announced to the angels as to when God created the earth, created man, uh, 
everything. It could have been, as far as we know, could have been virtually the snap of a finger. But that being said, it's believed that God revealed to the angels that he was going to choose the Blessed Mother as being his mother of God. And theologians theorize that the angels, some of the angels, the Lucifer and those that followed him, all the very different ranks of the angels, wouldn't have it. They didn't want it. They wouldn't accept it that they were, that God was going to re so reduce himself, so humble himself, that he was going to join his exalted nature, his unique, one of a kind, his eternal nature that will never change, joined together with a human being, human nature, human nature. And they would have to adore that God made man. And Lucifer said, non serviam, which literally, I suppose, translated, I will not serve or I will not submit. He didn't, and he rebelled, and St. Michael drove him out of heaven. And once again, the time span, we can only shake our head, we don't know. We don't know what it would be. I can give an example of what time would be, what eternity, is only an instant eternity. I've given examples of that too. But God created Eve, created the free will, and the devil, Lucifer, tempted her and she sinned, and it brought sin into the whole world, and that's what we suffer from today, the illnesses we have, the sicknesses, uh, even death itself. All the pains, the anguish, hurt, everything we have is because of what Eve did. And that was nothing compared with what the, the, the supernatural order was. It was t thrown in total disarray. Man's end was, was destroyed, if you will. It was blocked up. He could never achieve the end for which he was created to be with God for all eternity with the angels. Heaven was closed, and they had, man had no hope of making redemption because Eve, and every time we sin, we commit an infinite, we commit a sin against Almighty God, and that sin, even though we would distinguish, and rightly so, is relegated down to a, a venial sin or a mortal sin, because we know that if we were to accidentally bump somebody and they fall over, uh, would certainly is not as grave as if we purposely push them over. But putting that aside, when we sin against God, once again, the proportion of who God is, of, of an infinite nature, without limit, one could not even c comprise God in, in, in any way whatsoever to any kind of a place or time or anything. He is infinite. That means without limit in every which way. And how does a finite, we who are very limited, we only jump so high, run so fast, uh, eat so much, live so long, we're, we're limited, we're a finite creature. We're, we're not infinite, we're finite. How can a finite creature make infinite reparation against an infinite God? Well, the answer is he can't. So God became man, and he chose the Blessed Virgin Mary to be instrumental in bringing about that redemption, that ability for man to make reparation. He commands sin, so man should make reparation. But man can't do it, only God could do that, so God became man. And as a God, he could, as man, he could make, must make reparation. As God, he could and did make reparation. But when God sent the angel Gabriel down to Our Lady and announced to her that she has become the mother of God, and what St. Saint, Saint Luke records in the scripture, I, I'm convinced it has to be just a, uh, Our Lady would have told St. Luke just a line or two, or he was, it was such uh, intimate, sacred moment that even though St. Luke may have been told all, everything that the angel said to Our Lady, he chose only to write a few words. How he, the uh, angel announced to her, and Our Lady said, how can this be? I know not man. The angel said that the Holy Ghost shall overshadow thee, and thou shalt become the mother of God. That's what more or less what St. Luke wrote. One can almost imagine all of nature, when Eve sinned, is like, uh, is like, I don't even know what word to use. The, the, like, like in, the whole world went in disarray. Uh, it was in shock. It was in, almost in terror of what, could, what will happen and what could happen when man, through the, when Adam and Eve, through 
everything in a disorder. Man rebelled, and so man rebelled against God. Indeed, evil came into the world. Man's lower nature rebelled against higher man, a higher nature. Man rebelled against man. Nature rebelled against man. Uh, no longer was at that point, from that point on, they had to work by the sweat of his brow. And when the angel announced to Our Lady that she's become the mother of God, she questioned how this could be. And once again, the, all of nature, even the inanimate part of nature, almost as it were, was at a standstill waiting for that answer because Our Lady, like Eve, could have rebelled, like Luce herself said, I will not submit, I will not do this. And Our Lady could have did it without committing any sin whatsoever. And when she gave her consent, it must have been, the whole world must have sighed in relief, knowing that now the work of redemption can continue. And so then when Our Lady visited St. Elizabeth, it was St. Elizabeth who spoke out in loud voices, blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And, the, and for behold, it says, for thou, art, thou, for thou hast believed, all these things shall be accomplished was spoken to thee by thy the Lord through the angel. So whatever it was the angel told Our Lady, Saint Elizabeth was referring to that. That, what, that all things shall be accomplished that were spoken to thee by the Lord. And so Our Lady, overshadowed by the Holy Ghost, our Lord is conceived as both God and man, and the work of our redemption began at that moment where it was there brought to fruition almost, where now, now it was in time as we know a time, and we measure time by motion, by, by motion. Uh, now we can start putting time down into as to when that will be. Our Lord was born uh, 30 years in a, uh, with unknown uh, as, a car, as a son of St. Joseph the carpenter, and three years of public life crucified, and then the gates of heaven were opened. Now, based upon what St. Elizabeth said, and we take today's epistle of the book of Judith, we, we see that Our Lady had a, was honored in, in many ways, and certainly above all women. And St. And, and Elizabeth said that, 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 uh, bless, that she would be blessed among women. And yet in our own day and age, and it started back not just today, it started 500 years ago, when those who rebelled against God, maybe even with, the, we could go back to the devil himself when he rebelled, that they were not going to give honor, and the devil certainly wasn't going to give honor to a God-man, but how many was that refusing to do that also refused to give honor to Our Lady, to bless Our Lady uh, for who she was. And the, the adage was, the saying was that, well, Mary is like, just like any other woman. What a farce, what a false statement to say. She was not like any other woman. St. Elizabeth recognized that. Uh, she, she said, blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Uh, she says, because all the things shall be accomplished in thee that was spoken by the Lord. What, what a great point that was made, privilege was that she was to cooperate. Everything that was to be fulfilled was through Our Lady, by Our Lady. And so the church from that time on gave honor to Our Lady as being the mother of God. It was years, I'd say 30, 40, 50, 70, 80 years ago one reads in writings that it's almost as if even among, of course, beginning of the Novus Ordo, the, the changes that people are trying to subvert the church, they tried to, to relegate Our Lady down to being a mere, mere woman, tried to look upon her as not being anybody really special, and certainly not being the mother of God, and so they said the mother of Jesus, the mother of Jesus. Well, she is the mother of Jesus, but our, Jesus, our Lord, is God. She is overshadowed by the Holy Ghost and she conceived of the Holy Ghost. And she brought forth the Son of the Most High, the Son of God and the God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Ghost is one God. And so Our Lady brought forth and gave to the world the Son of God and she is the Mother of God. And to honor that, and to honor that, the church always had a mass in her honor, but as she herself said, of course, St. Elizabeth said the same, that she would be blessed. 
And Our, Our Lady herself, she says, because he hath regard, he referring to God, he hath regarded the humility of his handmaid, and behold, and this is her Magnificat, my soul doth magnify the Lord, she says. She says, he, God hath regarded the humility of my handmaid, and for, for behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. And indeed, we as Catholics do that very thing, give the honor to our Blessed Mother as being not just the mother of the man, Jesus, not just the mother of Jesus Christ, but the mother of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the mother of God himself. And so when we even pray the Hail Mary, when we say the prayers of the church, when we have the, the various devotions to Our Lady, the Masses in honor of Our Lady, we are fulfilling that, uh, if you will, prophecy, prophecy of Our Lady, uh, that she says, my soul doth magnify the Lord, and he that has regard the humility of his handmaid, for henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Blessed is he that is mighty, hath done great things to me. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.